Hello, this is Tom from NeverCenter, and in this video I'm going to show you the new features we've got in Pixelmash 2023.1, which is our second 2023 release. Uh, the file I'll be using in this is from a, uh, someone called Ansimas um, from itch.io. You can see the address right here. I put in the, um, the layer name. Here we go. Go check him out. Um, this is a really cool uh, set that he's made. Um, and all that I've done to um, uh, modify this from the, the way he has it originally is I put this colorize effect on the background layer, which is just this sky layer because I wanted blue clouds here. But we're going to be focusing on this front layer, which is the rocks layer. Um, and I'm going to be showing you with this the, uh, the new remap palette layer effect that uh, we've included in this version of Pixel Mesh. And this is a <clears throat> Excuse me. This is a really handy effect for basically when you want to remap um, the entire color palette of a layer or a document. Um, and this has several, uh, I'll show you each of these match methods that it uses. But basically, what's happening, um, how I've added this first, it's using the luminance order um, remapping method. So, what it's doing is in this layer, and I'll turn off the sky so this. This makes a little bit more sense. It's only thinking about this layer. So it will go through each color in the in the layer and figure out which is the darkest by luminance. And then the first color in this list, it will remap that color to it. So you found correctly this uh, sort of deep maroon color here is the darkest color. And now it's remapping that to black, but I can set it to remap to whatever color I want it to be. Um, and then if I add another color to this, it will find the second darkest color in the document and remap that color to whatever I have here. And again, I can make this, you know, whatever color I want. And I can even make the second color be um, remapped to a, a lighter or a darker color than the first, if this makes sense. So even though in this layer, in this color list order right here, the darker color is the second color, since it's doing luminance order, it's saying, okay, the darkest color in the document, I'm going to remap to whatever the first color in this list is. The next darkest color, I'm going to remap to whatever this is. So anyway, you can see um, if I uh, remove that, and let's start with here. If I just keep adding colors and making them a bit lighter, you can see how it's uh, taking each color in the document by order. And there are actually five colors in this layer and it's remapping each of those. So, um, and if I don't have all the colors matched, let's just say I've only got the three darkest colors matched, if I click Mask Unmatched Colors, it's just gonna remove from the scene, from the layer, those pixels that don't get matched. Um, all right, so let's go through some of the other um, matching ones let's actually let's make these all sort of a blue color let me steal a blue from this background and let's base it off of that and let's uh delete color whoops delete color now i'm going to add let's have three colors three different um, brightness levels based on that blue let's go with these okay i'll turn off the sky again so uh, luminance order again, it's doing what I've explained. If I go to luminance order full, then it will um, remap each of these colors, but it will, it will remap them to the full breadth of the colors of the layer or the document. So for example, like I said, this actually has five colors in it, but my remap colors, there's only three of them. And um, to make this a little bit easier, actually, let me go up to tools and I'm gonna add all the document colors to the palette and I'm going to auto sort the palette so you can see here are the five colors that are actually in the, the palette of this layer and like I said you can see there are five of them and there are three here so when I'm remapping them here it's saying maybe the two darkest colors will become this one the middle color 
will become this one and the two lightest ones will become this one. You can see it basically it expands whatever I've got my palette here or if I have more colors in this than I do in the actual layer then it will shrink them but it will make sure that every color is covered. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So um, and just to show some of the things that you can use this for uh, let me duplicate this layer. Let's turn the effects off for the top layer but I've got the sky and this bottom layer and you can see like I can uh, maybe I've got a scaled down version of this in the background and these colors maybe aren't the best but um, let's say do something like this you can see you can make sort of a, a background layer that's got a different set of colors and maybe fewer colors than your your foreground layer and it looks like it's sort of uh, you know fading into the background um, and I can move this wherever I want with my transforms and because pixel mesh has dynamic resolution it scales nicely and uh, you can make you know different background assets using something like that so that's the luminance order versions of this the next one is document palette order so if I click on this, or actually let's remove that layer that we just made. And let's turn this on to document palette order and turn it on. So document palette order uh, means that it will take whatever the colors are in your document palette and it will remap these according to that. Um, let me turn off mask unmatched colors. So this color, and you, you have to have a document palette up here. So again, if I go to tools and I go to clear palette, um, it will remove all those palette colors that I had saved up here. And now document palette order will do nothing because there's no document palette for it to match to. But again, if I turn off this and remove the sky and I add all document colors to the palette, which will only use this layer and I auto sort palette, now when I turn this on, it's mapping this first color to the first palette color and this color to the second palette color. And um, so that lets you, you know, if you've got a specific palette loaded, you can remap very specifically. One of the handy things you can do um, as of this new version of Pixel Mesh, we replaced the, the minus button in the palette in, when you're choosing colors for an, a layer effect. There used to be a minus button here. Now it's a menu button. And you can do things like add colors, delete colors, you can clear all colors, but you can also add the document palette or import a palette from a file. So if I add the document palette and I replace it, it's just loading whatever was in the document palette into here. And since this is doing uh, remapping by document palette order, it's got them all matched up. So I can just basically pick one of the colors in here and it's going to remap this to whatever the third one in the document palette is, but I've paired them up. So um, then I can specifically isolate that color and just remap it. Um, and I can do that, you know, for all of the colors in my document. Sort of like that. So that's a handy way to be able to very specifically remap individual colors. And again, um, say that I've got fewer colors here than I have in my actual document. I can mask unmatched colors and it will hide them. But I can also go to the next one uh, matching method, which is document palette order full. And it will take these three colors and spread them out to remap over those five colors. And uh, it's the same thing with the, the luminance order for where it's just making sure when there's a mismatch between the number of colors here and the number of colors in your document palette that it will map them all anyway. And you can see uh, it removes that um, mask unmatched colors because it knows well we're going to match all of the colors in this. All right. So... Um, Let's go to the next one, which is color distance. Okay, so this layer effect, um, remap palette, uh, replaces a layer effect that existed before in this image conversion one called um, restrict color palette. And it was basically this version where this is saying, 
match the colors that you're remapping by the distance from the original color to one of these mapped colors. So I've got these three mapped colors. If I turn the tolerance all the way up, it will just take each color that it finds in the document, say which of these three colors is it closest to, and it will make it that color. And I can dial down the tolerance. If the tolerance is zero, it will only match exact colors and won't really do anything. But, um, you know, it's, it's basically a way to say, okay, if I've got colors close to what I want, or, you know, maybe there's several colors in my document that are close to each other and I want to make them all the same, I would, um, let me, let's delete these excess colors here. I would choose that color that I want to map them all to and then I would pull up the tolerance until it basically covered all those colors. But again, if I pull the tolerance all the way up, it's going to remap everything to the closest color it finds and if there's only one color, it will remap them all to that color. But you can, as you, you know, change colors in here, you can um, basically get it to map how you want. And then the luminance distance is very slightly different that it's it's checking, it's not taking basically the hue of colors into account when it's determining what to match. It's just matching by luminance. Um, and you can play around with that to you know, get how you want. But you can do some uh, really neat things with these. Um, again, like if I say I uh, add the whole document palette and I replace it, and I do by document palette order, Okay, so this, like, I could do something like make the lightest color be white and the next lightest color be slightly, you know, grayer. And it's like I'm replacing the, the highlights with snow, so it looks like a snow-covered um, arch rock formation here. Um, and, you know, if you, like I say, if you built this up off of a well-known color palette that's limited to 16 or 32 colors, you could just throw in this remap palette and load in another palette that is sort of designed to correspond with that and uh, quickly and easily remap your entire color palette. So um, those are the, the neat things you can do with the, the remap palette effect and with this new more advanced um, color picker or color list for your layer effects that lets you, like I say, load either the document palette or import a palette from a file. And the final thing that I wanted to show um, that we've, uh, there's quite a few bug fixes in this version of Pixel Mash, a lot to do with animation. But one of the things that we've also improved is SVG import. Um, and so when you've got an SVG like this one that's just these flames, uh, before, because this had a gradient applied, that would import very poorly to Pixel Mash. And there were other, some other problems with like layer order. Um, but uh, anyway, we've greatly improved SVG import and fixed several of those bugs. And now, uh, because Pixel Mesh doesn't support uh, the, the vector layer concept of gradients, it'll just take the average color for, if there's a gradient in here, it'll average out the colors and import the layers that. So they import much more um, close to, to what the original SVG is. And like I say, there are several bug fixes with this. But uh, this lets you get your layer, your vector layers imported, and um, like I say, uh, with uh, Pixel Mesh's dynamic resolution, it's super neat to be able to do stuff with with vector layers. I'll show you some of the animation stuff um, that we have uh, improved also in this version, just using this. Let me just actually I wanted the other layer. Let's keep this layer and delete these guys. So we're just working with this one vector layer. Um, for one thing, we've changed. So for the animation speed, rather than seconds per frame, we've changed it to a more standard frames per second. So if I have like a four frame animation and uh, let's do a transform keyframe. So it's just going from that first spot to the second and let's like this, so this is showing up here. And I'll drag this window over here so we can watch what's happening. Okay, so um, yeah, like I say, this, if I change this to eight frames per second, then it doubles the speed. Just a little bit more intuitive of a way to, um, 
to animate. And let me actually remove this keyframe. So now it's still playing the animation, but it's um, since I removed the transform, it's not doing anything. But uh, we've added a, a handy prompt when you click on image keyframe. So if I want to make this this fourth frame be a new image keyframe, I click this. Previously, it would just copy in the previous keyframe, but now there's a prompt that comes up asking, do I want to copy the existing keyframe so that this new keyframe will have the same data that was in that first keyframe, or do I want to add a blank keyframe? So if I choose blank, then it's going to basically show that first image for three frames, and then on the fourth frame, it will be a blank keyframe. And I can add in, you know, my own vector whatever for that fourth keyframe, um, but it's its own vector keyframe its own vector image. Um, so, oops, and I transformed it, so now it's transforming. But um, anyway, if I turn that off, let's turn it back on with a keyframe and let's copy the existing keyframe. So now uh, frame four contains the same vector image that frame one does. And if I say, you know, come in and do some vector editing, um, and I've got, you can see I've got tween image keyframes enabled on here. This allows me to just like, you know, animate this by moving around some control points and starting to like get some flame stuff going on in the animation there. And maybe it looks better if I boomerang it instead of um, cycling it. But uh, anyway, that little prompt just makes it quite a bit more intuitive. Um, for what happens when you set an image keyframe in your animations. And like I said, there's a lot of bugs that got fixed in this version with animation in general. So I think you'll uh, find it much more uh, intuitive and reliable than um, in the previous versions. So let us know what you think. Um, go up to your help menu and choose send feedback to give us more ideas of what to work on. And we hope you'll enjoy this update to camera, or to, not to camera bag, that's our photo editor, to Pixel Mash, and um, we look forward to hearing what you have to, what you think about it. Thanks.